Hey everybody, Julie Quinn here, and I'm going to introduce you to week three in writing 393. Now we're getting into the heart of the work. You will have completed writing assignment one, the personas, and you are working toward your set of instructions that were related to the personas. So you're going to imagine the personas while you're building the instructions. So the instruction assi assignment has a little bit um, of an innovation in um, instructions where you're adding um, particular steps uh, with specific consideration to the personas that you created. So that's what's happening this week. You'll see we've got the introduction blurb and you've got a long set. Uh, we've got resources on quick start guides, samples, because you'll be creating a quick start guide in the coming weeks. So that's a little prep for what's happening going forward. Um, you've got a reading on why developers write horrible documentation. Um, uh, sometimes you have the, the, the website engineer, the website designer, um, uh, the programmer writing the document and maybe you really don't want that to happen. That's why, uh, technical writers exist. Um, you've got a video on the basics of print document design. Now, listen, this is not a graphics, um, heavy class. Like you're not going to be doing actual graphic design and HTML editing or anything like that. But document design does come into play in the course. And so um, thinking about the basics as you're preparing your Word documents um, for submission, I think, uh, will be really helpful for you. One of your classmates asked in the Q&A, did you need um, fancier um, uh, formatting software, you know, um, uh, visual software? And the answer is actually no. I do recommend, though, that you have Adobe um, <clears throat> Reader uh, at the very least, and you're able to, once you create your instructions and your um, other documents, to make sure the images stay in place when it's saved, you could actually save those as a PDF. You can um, print a PDF uh, on, on most computers, I believe, and so you should be able to do that. That helps lock your images in place, especially when we talk about the part concepts. Um, one of those concepts in particular is proximity. So for example, so you have a title of a figure. You don't want the title on page one and the figure on page two. You want to keep those in close proximity. You want to keep them together. So, you know, having uh, the ability to save your documents in Word like you're saving it like a snapshot so things don't move around, I think w would be beneficial for you. So uh, discussion about consistency in writing lists and technical documents. Uh, you're going to be referring back to, I think, a lot of the content this week. And of course, an introduction to white papers. Um, how to set up tables and figures, um, and how to cite images and photos, because you will be doing some original image taking uh, or creating, especially in the white paper assignment, um, like a chart or a graph or something. But you'll often be borrowing other images from the web, and you must cite it like you did in Writing 112 when you cited uh, words that you borrowed. We also cite images that we borrow. Okay, so there is a lot of content this week. Break it down to two or three a day. Um, it, it, there's not a ton of text. I mean, some of these are video tutorials that are only a couple of minutes long. Um, you'll see that we've got the tutorials on each of these principles, which are just a couple minutes a piece. So there's not, you know, 20 hours of reading, but there's a lot of little things this week that you're going to want to definitely take notes on. Um, well, I'm a tech person, but I'm also old fashioned enough to say, print out what you can print out if the concepts seem difficult and when it's textual and not video and take notes on everything that will help you remember uh, the information. You actually have three discussions this week, but let me just say the balance will be in week eight when you have one. Okay. So it will even itself out in the end, the first two, I'm more than willing to be flexible on the due date. Uh, no, I'll keep the due dates for the first two. I'm willing to be flexible on the third as long as it's all finished by Tuesday. So just keep that in mind as well. Assignments to complete. You've got writing assignment two, which is the set of instructions for a website with the description and application of how you adapted it to each of your personas. So let's take a peek at writing assignment number Okay, set of instructions for a local website. I'm not going to beat this to death, but I did leave feedback on last week's discussions 
um, highlighting the fact that if you chose a wildly popular website, a really common one, there may already be some element of these instructions that pre-exist or that exist, pre-exist, that exist. So choosing a uh, hyper local, small companies make the text that you create more valuable and original. All right. So the task for the instructions in this assignment. You will write a set of instructions that explain how to accomplish a task on a website at a local institution. You will write a brief description of how the personas you wrote for writing assignment one informed the assignment. So the first thing is the task uh, is the instructions. And then part two are your notes and how you um, uh, incorporated the different personas needs. OK, uh, no, there's no minimum or maximum but you've got to have like word count, but you've got to have eight or more steps. And you must include one graphic for each step. Um, a lot of the documents on the web, we visually show people, like we take a screenshot and we circle things and we edit the image. Editing the images is going to be real important. So if you're telling somebody, click the pull down menu, what you want to do is take a screenshot of the, the website where the pull down menu is and circle it. And that's image one. And the next one is, when you open it and you show the pull down menu uh, expand it, right? This is how we write instructions. We don't want to make assumptions that, it, that everybody's going to very quickly be able to follow the steps without them being explicitly broken into each component. That's why the personas were important to think about. Well, what problems do different types of users have? Okay. All graphics should be labeled figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four, and they all should be screen captures of the website you are demonstrating. So for example, let me go to, um, let's say, um, what's my local, um, uh, third base pizza, because <laughs> there's a lot of pizza, third base pizza. I live in the uh, Woodbridge, Virginia area. So we've got two third base locations, but it's a hyper local restaurant. Let's go to their website. So you see that their website is here. And um, we've got, let's see, it's kind of maybe this is, I haven't really used their website, but oh, download the menus. Maybe you're trying to tell somebody to download a menu so you can take, take a screenshot or a partial screenshot. And if you're telling somebody to download the menu, there's my image and I'm in paint right now. You can circle the image. Now, listen, my circle is, is actually really sort of embarrassing and not, um, uh, well done. Let's think, let's make it neat. Just slightly neater. And then I'm going to draw an arrow. I know a lot of students use, uh, different types of art. So that's just a little bit neater. Uh, if you were an actual technical writer, you would probably, and then of course you save your image and then you upload it into your document. You probably would maybe use, um, uh, images. Let me not say this, um, of, uh, arrows and boxes. And I absolutely like that. But for the purposes of this demonstration, um, we're, uh, actually not, uh, going to look at that now, but you know, you can do that. But if you make your little air, if you freehand draw it, just make, make it kind of neat like I did in my second version, and then that'll be fine. Uh, there is a word count for the discussion of the personas in the last half, but there is not a word count in the instruction. Description of 100 to 200 words, which is like a paragraph, right? A nice chunky paragraph indicating to me how your instructions accommodated the personas, brief strategies to follow. Um, the website should be for regional or local company. I mean, I can't state this enough and it's even in bold in here. Right. Um, the organization can be national. Um, the set of instructions you write must involve a local or regional location. So for those of you that are choosing, you know, Home Depot or um, Amazon or what have you, I'm not going to penalize you for doing that. Um, uh, but there isn't really a, a local Amazon location unless you're talking about dropping something off at Kohl's, which I guess has an Amazon drop off. So be really thoughtful about how you're setting it up and just make sure that there are no um, other um, preset instructions similar to yours on the web. Okay. Let's see. Um, whether you choose local establishment or national organization with regional locations, important features of your instructions will be that they're written to a general audience, but accommodate the personas. You got to have these steps. Some of this information is just repeated 
uh, from the summary of the assignment. Okay, um, sections to include in your instructions, title. Um, this does not have to be MLA or APA style. This is not an essay. So you don't have to think about that, but make the text legible, you know, not super small font, uh, something, uh, maybe a sans serif font without the, you know, something just really easy and pops. I find Times New Roman really effective, you know, um, let's see, descriptions. Yeah, just make sure you have the title, the, in, the overview, um, and um, the instructions themselves. And then the due date, of course, is the end of um, week three. Let me show you one final thing before I finish uh, the recording here. So let me go into, let's see. I just want to go over the assignment rubric with you. So I'm going to pull up view as learner so you, I can show you what it looks like for you. And if you go into act, activities and assessments and you go to writing assignment two, you will see not just the handout that, that we just very briefly overviewed, but you'll see the gradable sections. It said really having eight steps, but you'll get four points for seven or more. So there you go. Instructions begin with an imperative verb. This is something that a lot of students forget to do. Um, you don't want to say the first thing you do is imperative verbs. Um, let me do a word document here. Imperative verbs are, um, are steps like this. Um, click on the pull down menu open, start, download. These are imperative verbs. And so you don't want to start with first, second. We already do that with the, the ordinal numbering system. So uh, make sure you follow the assignment rubrics. And the assignment rubrics are going to tell you exactly how I'm guaranteed to grade you. Your steps are numbered and that there are clear instructions with no obvious gaps. Um, notes, explanations, and warnings are included in the steps, but are not numbered as steps. You could have a caution, you could have like a box, but you don't want it in a bullet or a number within a step. And remember, bullets are not sequential. So when you set up sets of instructions, you only use bullets for like list of, lists of ingredients in a recipe or list of things to include, but they don't have to be followed in a particular order, right? Everybody's gonna need note an explanation or a warning. For example, the local pizza shop, no, they don't take American Express or they don't take Discover. Note, um, uh, to order online, you must purchase at least $10 worth of items. That kind of thing is a note. There are abilities for notes to be in every single set of instruction. A note, an explanation warning, and in a um, text box is a nice way to do that. Let's see here. Um, make sure um, that you have that overview, which is just a sentence or two, that this is a, that this document is a set of instructions that does blank, right? That you've got the appropriate number of graphics, um, that your graphics, like you don't have some centered and then some off to the right. A graphic is consistently set up on the page, that they are screen captures like I practiced a minute ago, and that they're labeled figure one, figure two, figure three. That makes it so easy for readers like me. That the document has a sufficient amount of white space, so not everything is smooshed together and it's hard to tell where each figure goes with each step. Proximity is demonstrated. I mentioned that um, at the beginning of this video. You don't want a tape, uh, figure one on one page and then the figure itself on the next page. Proximity, keep them close together. And then finally, run your grammar and your spell checker and add the description of those instructions. I've noticed students in the past have forgotten this, and then they lose a lot of points in the assignment that um, they've done the instructions beautifully. They just didn't include the description. This is what, 100 to 200 words at the end of this. And it helps um, fold assignments one and two together in a nice package. So that's my quick um, overview of week three and writing assignment two. Reach out if you have any questions.